Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. So over the past year, my brother and I, who also has a YouTube channel, Adventures with Paul, go check it out, really got into smoking and barbecuing meats. We both got different types of smokers and all the different types of accessories that go along with them. So I thought what would make a good Christmas gift this year would be to get him an apron but not just any apron. I really wanted to get a chef's apron that was a sturdy material and also had a bunch of pockets for when you're outside and you're smoking your meats. I also wanted to take it a step further. I've been reading and watching a lot of videos about how to wax jackets and I've never done it before and I was really curious to how the process works. So several months ago, I was at a local Orvis shop. They sell a lot of barber jackets, which is a British outdoors company and they make a lot of motorcycle jackets, coats and jackets that are designed to withstand the elements. So when I was in the store, I found a paraffin wax kit from Barber and it was around $30 and it was about a pint's worth of paraffin wax. The wax is designed to either recoat your jacket because that's a thing after several years of heavy wear they actually recommend that you do re-wax your jacket but it's also good for um, waxing something for the first time and I wanted to give it a go so I ordered this really cool apron on Amazon not realizing that it was actually a small business I'll do an unboxing but when the package got delivered it came with a really nice note card and inside it was not just the apron but it was a really nice tea towel and also a bottle opener that you can clip onto the apron for obvious reasons uh, when you're outside grilling your meats. So the other thing that I did was go to a thrift store and if you've ever been to a thrift store you know that in their cooking supply section there are thousands and thousands of old abandoned cookware a lot of it is in really crappy condition but that's what I wanted for this project you see what you need to do is you have to reconstitute that wax you can't apply it as is you have to get it in its liquid form and the best way to do that is to take a pot of water, stick it on the stove, and heat it up until the wax becomes completely translucent. Now the reason I bought this from the thrift store is I did not want to ruin one of my own really good pots and pans. So I paid around two dollars for this pot and with the full intent that I was going to clean it out when I was done and just re-donate it to the store. So you want to make sure that you lay out a really uh, good surface. I'm actually using a drop cloth here and I'm going to lay the apron over top of the drop cloth just to protect my floors. And it's taking a good 10 minutes for the wax to actually run clear. And this is really key because what I learned is that the wax goes really fast. So you want to make sure that it's all translucent so that all usable wax in this tin is going to be able to be spread out over top of the apron. I've seen a lot of people talk about the type of brushes that they use and most people mention the chip brush which are those cheap craft brushes at any arts and craft place or any of your big box chains. I don't like using chip brushes because the bristles always fall out and I didn't want to spend half of my time removing bristles after I had applied the wax. So I buy these brushes from Walmart and they're more of a synthetic brush and they don't have a tendency to break down and uh, get destroyed as easily, which I knew that I needed at least probably five minutes worth that I could uh, be able to apply this wax. So now you're ready to wax and the best method is just to dip and go, just dip and brush, dip and brush, dip and brush. It is possible to spread a little bit too much wax. Make sure you cover completely and then you can go back and fill in the gaps. As you can see in the beginning, I got a little overzealous and I noticed that by the time I got to the chest area of the apron, I started to run kind of low. I changed my methodology and actually started at the bottom and worked my way back up. Now I do know that for a coat, uh, Barber actually recommends that you might actually need two pints and that's also what the clerk at the store told me. But for this simple apron project, I knew I was just covering the front size. I wasn't gonna be covering the straps at all. And I knew that in the end, once it cured and dried, I'd be able to lift some of it off and move it back around.
So that's pretty much it. I run it out here and then I hang it in a cool and dry closet for about a month. Now you don't have to do this step, but I wanted to make sure that it was really cured. And while it was hanging in the closet, every couple days, I would actually take a rag, go and take some layers off. It had that super oily texture and I didn't want that because the goal is not to stain your clothes with the wax. The goal is to protect your clothes while you're cooking your food. So I knew that I could actually take some of this excess wax off, wipe it away, and then move it around into the areas that maybe didn't get as much coverage. So that's it, it's super simple. Let me know what you think in the comments if you've tried this yourself or if you have a suggestion for when I eventually go to do a coat. I thought this was a really cool idea. Hopefully this is something that you can try. It's really easy to use. If you don't have an Orvis store or a barber store near you, you can find this stuff on Amazon. And there's several different companies out there that make wax for jackets. So before we get to the final shots, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, if if you like this kind of content, you'll see that I do this kind of stuff occasionally on the channel. And thank you for watching, guys. Have a great one. I'll see you on the next video.